Okay, so this is a little review of the hand roll-up piano, and then I'm going to also compare it to this one. I've got a separate review on this, but I thought while I've got it out, you might as well see both next to each other. So this is only going to be really quick. It'll be like five minutes or so. So in the box, you get your manual, and it shows the inputs that are on the back. So you've got your USB, which will be how you do it as a MIDI device. You can also charge it via that. Your headphones if you want silent practice your mp3 is great you can link your phone to that if you want to go uh, mini jack to mini jack you can put a microphone in it but when you do um the speakers just sound absolutely awful so probably don't bother and you also got a sustain pedal the sustain pedal works really well um this is a, a square one that's kind of got rubber on the bottom but it does slide about a bit it's not actually nearly as good as the one that comes with the uh, carry-on piano the carry-on piano one. looks like this and it's just just a much better overall build it's much smaller as well if you're going to buy these you want a compact piano so there you go so you got this and you got your little chargey thing which will be your usb and then obviously you've got your piano so the positives of this is it's quite light you could easily pop this in a bag and take it with you places um, the negatives are obviously it's not hard so there's a there's a lot of problems with trying to actually play the piano um, so rolling it out you need a flat surface to be able to do it then you also encounter a problem because they haven't bothered to put any uh, rubberized material under here so like we've got a glass section of our table so I'm actually gonna have to put something under there and the piano is vast which is <laughs> absolutely huge um, the good thing about this is it's got the right length keys, which is super. Um, and also, when you push it, you can feel some resistance going down. Uh, let's just take a moment to have a quick look here. So uh, to turn it on, you just press the middle button. Obviously, the, there's so much here. Um, you can use the internet to have a look at some PDFs and things. But my, my big gripe with this is that all of the dials here are in this really dark blue colour. Um, so it's really, really... It thinks, it thinks we're playing notes, but we're not. That's another problem. Um, but yeah, it's it's so dull. It's, it's a bit of a nightmare. Now, our eyesight's good. The house is well lit at the moment. Uh, but I would say anyone who's got slightly poor eyesight is going to really struggle with this. And you don't want to be faffing about so they could make that a bit lighter. There's loads and loads of different options on here, which obviously you can look at on the internet. Um, but the point of this is just to hear it played as a piano sound. And then also compare it to the um, hard fold-out carry-on a piano brand so you can get an idea of which one you might like because these two you're basically going to buy one or the other if you want this idea okay so the first problem is that it randomly plays notes on its own uh, it sounds like this and I, I work as a full-time piano player um, but you no matter how good you are you're never going to make it react exactly as you want so even if I just try and play something simple You know, that's okay, but you can hear straight away, I didn't do that deliberately. That's okay, but also with this, because there's no resistance and there's, there's no higher black notes, it's actually really difficult to work out where you are. So this isn't probably a piano you can use where you're reading music and you play along. You really need to be engaged with it all the time. Um, also, the black strips in between, um, I found for students, they're really, really distracting. The, the colours aren't printed correctly, they're, they're meant to have white in the middle, but with all of these I've seen, the white's printed off centre, so you've got these really thick black lines in between, um, which is actually a bit mesmerising if you're looking at the piano for a while and you look from side to side. So here's what it sounds like, this is just the normal piano sound. As I try and play fast, you can see it's kind of that that's where you reach your limit of thinking, yeah, I probably don't want it. So I highly don't recommend this. Now, when you start relating it to something like this, this is a whole different quality of product, although that you're paying £10 cheaper for a carry-on piano. So the problem is that obviously it's it's a fixed unit, so it's very slightly heavier. Um, but they do have this really nice and neat carry bag that locks at the top and also obviously you can fit this in a rucksack if you need to. And this, they have bothered to put rubber pads, this company, so this is great. Um, other really good feature about this is 
that they've put the the button for turning it on is protruding so although it'll be behind the piano you can find it this again uses the pedal um, this uses a uh, headphone socket as well and also it's got a USB charger so they're exactly the same but this one I'm not nervous about putting on the glass of our table because it's not going to damage anything it's got a neat little system that locks in place um, now the problem is that obviously it's a lot smaller keys but it is what it is. Uh, you can see on the left hand side as well that it's a lot easier to read the dials. This is really intuitive. Obviously, if you need to, you can go ahead and watch my video on describing everything about this piano. Um, something I do like is this speakers at either end of this one, which is quite good. And unlike this one, when I, when I, when I move it, it's just really bad. Um, this one is not gonna do anything unless you actually touch the keys. We can turn this up as well. It's, it's speakers don't crack either. And you can play way fast on this. So if I just do one on here and one on here, you can see some difference in pieces. So here we go. One on here. I don't think the sound is particularly better in here, but it doesn't crack. The flip side of that is that on this you get loads and loads of key noise. However, if you're using it through headphones or you're doing it as a MIDI device, I'd probably favour key noise and getting all the notes that I'm pushing rather than the randomness of this uh, rollout piano. So if we just do something else that may be a bit more detailed, so if I go... That's meant to be a blues scale. If, so what I'm playing is this. Just so that you can actually get an idea. So what, what you're meant to be hearing is... trying to play something fast but when I try it on here it's horrible right this one's actually better so this one doesn't miss any notes the action in this is actually quite amazing I hit every note that I was aiming for but that key noise is so overriding that's when you might want to think about putting it through a DI or direct input but obviously you don't need to see that in today's video because it's just a comparison between these and I'll put a little card up at the top so that you can get a link straight to this and then you can see it as a direct input through my other video if you want to. Um, so my my kind of view would be I'd favour this one. Um, ideally I'd want none of them. Uh, you can, these are like 79 and 89 pounds but you can get a rock jam keyboard for 42 pounds um, which from Amazon which will basically do everything these ones can, uh, but be a lot more solid and a lot better. But then obviously you can't take that with you as easy. Um, these both have pretty good charge. This one says it will last eight hours, and that's that's true. I've used that for eight hours. This one I read somewhere it said that well, someone said that they've got ten hours out of it. Um, so far, my experience with this one is as the battery starts to go, you lose your volume, which is really weird. So it'd be better if it kind of was on full volume all the way and then the battery just cut out. This one does that. This one doesn't start losing volume as you get to the end of the battery life. It stays good. So my favour, well, my idea is that I'm favouring this one. If you wanted to hear some of the other options for this, we can take an extra minute though. If you don't want to hear any other sounds than this, obviously you can turn the video off there. Um, so some of the extra things that you've got on here is that you can actually transpose the piano, which is quite nice if we've got a C. Which is great if you're going to accompany a singer. But obviously you'd have to play something slow and you can't play many notes at once because it's not very happy. It's got its volume up, it goes really, really loud. So if I was in a school teaching and a kid needed some help, I could always go. And they could, you know, see that about. Uh, there's also some demo modes in here and you can do some different tones as well. So we'll just take one minute to have a look at the different tone and then have a look at the demo button as well. So tones, here's the piano. There's a brighter piano. And or even though these tones are great, already I'm missing really simple notes, even when I'm pushing them. So it's kind of seems pointless looking through the tones when the piano doesn't actually work properly. Um, and then the other kind of things you can do is record on this, which is quite a nice feature, but again, it's kind of pointless because you might not get all the notes you actually try and play. Um, and then you can do a bit of vibrato as well and bits like that. It's also got a drum kit and there's also a little fill-in button. So if I press the demo button, that's 
that's what it shows you and it's like oh wow that's what I can do uh, but that's only actually going to happen if it bothers to play the notes that you're pushing so maybe I think it's probably quite a good idea but maybe the technology is not quite there so at the moment I'd say probably have to stick with one like this and this one's got accompaniment as well so you can kind of do both you can always use accompaniment through a door in your PC or your laptop and then put these through and layer their single sound over the top um, which is possible too um, if you're going to use these just as a MIDI device just a final thought um, I'd say you could only use the carry-on piano as this because when you try and use this through MIDI it's not going to pick up all the notes that you play even if you're super super careful it's just the technology is just not there and this is probably one of the better hand rolled pianos that I've tried but still not great okay so thanks very much for watching that's my review on both of them, so I'd say go for the carry-on one, but then if you really need a, a, a layout one, maybe if you're just a teacher in a practice room and there's no other options, I, could, I couldn't teach from this, it wouldn't be fair on the student because it's not good enough. But what I could do is if they played a wrong note and they're on a piano, especially with Covid, I could say, oh, it should be this note. And then they could try and copy that. Or if I'm with a singer and they just needed chords, I could try and play some chords along with them, but that's really the limit. As soon as I start moving fast, the piano gets really confused. And that's just not my thoughts. I've got some other friends that have these and they definitely agree. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.